Unified District Board of School Directors. Uh, this is our regular meeting, Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021, at 6.30 p.m., live and in, on virtual uh, at the Rochester School and via Google Meet. Call to order. Any adjustments to the agenda? Excellent. Uh, a timekeeper. Sure. Would you, Amy? Or. I do have enough battery on my phone. <laughs> I, I, if you're not, I can. I'm okay, pretty we good. Can... I got 89 here, so I can, you can trade it off. Okay. And, uh, so. What do you like? Just a clock or? Well, timer? we'll do it, yeah. Okay. Um, if you need it. Okay. Uh, consent agenda, five minutes. Board comments? Let's give it five. I don't know. Who? Do we have any board comments? Bill, do you have any board comments? Nice haircut, by the way. Um, reports to the board, let's give this half hour, you think? Probably 15, 20 is going to be fine. Um, Maybe not there. We got the uh, policy we'll discussion. Did you give 20? Uh, I, I'm going to say half an hour, right? Okay. Just to be conservative, let's surprise ourselves. Uh, discussion items, seven. Half an hour, be optimistic? Probably. It's pretty optimistic. That. Yeah, 40. I would say probably that's Do you want to actually let's give each hour. one a... Yeah, let's do that. Um, spring 2021, 15? Maybe 10 to 15, 10. depending on what you guys say. 10. High school, Rochester High School status, 10. Yeah, good. Stockbridge generator bids, 10. We'll see yeah. information. Do we, are we going to vote on that tonight? That's yeah, up to you. Oh, it's yeah, good. to do it. Administration poll. Uh, oh, for funding the generator. I think shouldn't those two go together? But uh, so ten for that, so twenty maybe. Yeah, for twenty less. for the whole thing. Annual board retreat. Um, I think it's going to ten, hopefully, but mm -hmm. we'll see. So that's that's forty minutes. That's about what we figured total for that. And then action items, most of the time we end up taking action on the item when we discuss it. But um, we'll give that another 15. And the new hires resignations. And these are all hires, I hope, yes? Yes, they're all hires. <laughs> I was going to say. And we Please. You received their resumes. What's okay. that? You got their resumes. I yes, think. yes, right. we did. Yeah, I just, just seeing next to the resignation name. Um, uh, very good. Um, what do you think? 15 on that? 10? Yeah. 15. Sure. That might be generous. Though. Good. Thank Hopefully. you. And then we're on the back of that page. Executive session. Who knows? Future agenda items. Public comment will be, again, what? What do you do? Five per person or two five per, per person? Five per person maximum. Okay. Yeah. Five per person maximum. Um, hopefully, okay. uh, usually less, but that's up to them. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Um, keep us going. Consent agenda 4.1. We need a match, don't we, to keep this table from because that's going to drive us crazy. <laughs> um, nobody smokes anymore, so nobody has matches. I think that's going to do it. Nope, wrong way. Sorry, technical difficulties. Be right with you. Consent Agenda 4.1, approve the minutes of Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, regular meeting. Any corrections to this? Um, all in favor of approving the minutes of June 1st, 2021, say aye. 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 Patrick? Are you there, Patrick? Uh-oh, we don't have a quorum. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you. Who moved that? What's that? Who moved that? I moved to... Oh, sorry. I'm a little rusty. I thought he was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I, can I have a... I, I, moved, to, I moved to improve the minutes of Tuesday, June 1st. You might want to fire me after tonight. I'm sucking. Uh, thank you, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Patrick, one more time, please. 
Bye. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. Don't beat me up too much. But it's all right. Get I'm back to this. Yeah, this is, exactly. this in-person thing's it. all odd. I'm feeling it. Okay. Board comment. Uh, uh, the only comment I wanted to make is uh, this idea of Jamie's to uh, uh, take a month off, um, especially after the year we have had on this board, was greatly appreciated. Um, and I think it was also greatly appreciated by the staff um, to really have some time. I think it's a great thing, and I hope that we will be able to be in good enough shape next year uh, going forward to do it again. Um, I certainly felt the results of that. <laughs> uh, good, as you can see, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, uh, good, any other board comment, Bill? No, Patrick, do you have any board comment? Uh, I don't right now, thank you. Do it, Amy? No, thank you. Very good, moving on, reports to the board. Start with 6.1, the superintendent. Uh, so good evening, and uh, you have my report in hand. I'll add that I have not at unpacked the announcement today yet. Uh, to give you all the details, and I expect uh, firm guidance to come out of the AOE and Department of Health later this week around how we'll reopen um, in regards to their recommendations. And so I have a superintendent's meeting with Secretary French Thursday. I think he's going to release it typically just before that or just after that. So um, I expect that I'll get guidance Thursday, either morning or afternoon. And um, I definitely think that we can expect that we're going to be masked in buildings to start the school year um, and then we'll await other guidance and I think that that recommendation around masking will be at least uh, through the first couple months is my sense um, based on what they're putting as a ratio for those students who are actually uh, vaccinated 80% is what they're looking for mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and will it be different between uh, elementary and uh, the upper grades where the kids uh, have option to be vaccinated if they're 12 plus you know in the middle high school stay tuned stay tuned okay. yeah. I, I think we should all expect all grades are masters okay. yeah. good further questions for our superintendent bill uh, patrick questions for the superintendent uh no not not this time thanks i had a yes. question on his uh report um uh, on the uh trainings that are going to be happening at the beginning of august um, I'm just wondering how uh, those are being paid for. Is that with grants? Because um, we're asking the teachers to come in um, these additional number of days for so this training, which the I think PD's is PDs covered um, via the ESSER two grant, and then all other summer work and required planning time for teachers, which is paid at 25 an hour, is covered under ESSER two as well. Oh, so the Bridges training and the, the Amy Toss training, that's all ESSER two? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. And the thinking of for how to pay for it next year? That's for two. Oh, that'll start three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, I think that we, we need to start budgeting for summer PD, but this will allow us to get a few years under our belt and write the ship, and then we should mm -hmm. be able to do that. Okay. That's good. No, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's important. It gets people going. You're talking about kids getting kind of geared up for school. Yeah. How about teachers and administrators kind of getting in the focus? Um, and thinking about the important things moving ahead, goals, among other things. So, no, I, uh, I can tell you some horror stories where that didn't happen, mm -hmm. and uh, in circumstances far more great than this one. So I commend staff for doing this, and I think it should be a priority no matter who's paying for it. Oh, I agree. So uh, just to remind you, ESSA runs through in three summers. So we're not just talking about two summers. Mm -hmm. We have the third summer, too. So. Right. And my hope is, is that, you know, we will have a real strong base of PD at that point. Mm -hmm. So we still may offer some summer programming, but it shouldn't need to be at the extent that we're doing it right now. And just to clarify for those listening, if you're not familiar, PD is professional development for teachers, and ESSER is the COVID. Yeah, it's part of the CARES Act. Care, CARES Act, um, federal oh, government money. secondary yep. with COVID relief. Yep, just, just, I think it's always good if we... Um, Absolutely. Um, acknowledge acronyms that we are very facile with, but others might not be. Good. Uh, further, any further questions? Amy? No, thank you, good? you very much. Very good. Principal's report, please. Principal report. This is a difference, you realize. No uh, S anymore. I know. Um, 
So you have my report. I guess I'm still on the principal's report. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Old habits, <laughs> um, I think the highlight that we should really commend folks for is we have a pretty extensive new staff, especially in Rochester, and as well um, as some new folks in Stockbridge. But every classroom teacher, K through six, in either campus is participating in one, if not both, of the. Um, professional development training and that was it wasn't like um, it was not a hard ask of folks great. people were great to jump on and wanted to participate in it and we are still working on coming together for some team time before the professional development um, in service time starts to just allow four five six teachers on both campuses to kind of coordinate so we can do some more things together as well as K through three and just really feel organized and um, I guess I assumed that this, these trainings that I was talking about earlier, are they for our side or are they all? Um, they're the whole issue. They're the whole issue, so they're able to collaborate with mm -hmm. um, other. Yeah. And when you say the team, that's just our side. Right. Yeah. Teamwork, team building is just, just our side. Just and for our PD side. is yeah. SUY. Good. Good. Questions for the principal. Patrick, questions for the principal. From the report? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No. I you got it. Good. Wow. This is. Don't I'm nervous just, about I this. We're going so fast. My, my right foot. It's like, <laughs> I hit the brake. So no, but, um, yeah, don't say anything. You're right. 6.3 business manager. Please. Hello everyone, you have my report. Um, August is very, very busy in the business office, trying to do all year end closure for FY21, preparing for audit, but also getting everything ready to go for FY22. Um, I am going to be taking vacation the week of August 16th, so that's in that mix as well. But otherwise, when I come back in September, we'll have your FY21 year end projections. If there's any questions, um, just because I'm clueless, uh, and you probably even said it, um, audit. All of the audit stuff is due uploaded by August 27th, and Great. then physical audit they will be in our office in September. But we think we're on track to get it on schedule for maybe the first time. As of right now, we are. <laughs> that would be, instill such respect and admiration from our community. I think yep. that's great. Congratulations. Questions, Bill, business? Uh, comment and the question, uh, comment is congratulations, you're taking a vacation um, <laughs> during a, a key time, so that shows confidence in your staff and your numbers, oh. and um, we, I think we all feel comfortable and very much appreciative that you were able to do that. Um, it's not easy, and so um, I hope uh, when you're on vacation, you're not thinking about Yes. <laughs> and, and you turn your phone off all that sort of thing. The one question I had was on your report, the last number. Yep. Um, committed um, revenue equals 144610 surplus at the start of, are you talking about the start of this coming? At the end of last, so this was based off your FY20 audits. So that was where we ended in FY20 to gear up for FY21. So however we end, at the end of FY21, we'll have an impact on that surplus. Okay, so the Here number, the number of the 144,000 is not the number we're going forward to in September. That's the number you started with in June. In last June? Yep. Last year. Okay, and so in September we're going to hear, get to what the yes. number we're going forward to. Okay, yep. gotcha. Thank you. Any questions for the business manager? Uh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Patrick, questions for the business manager? Uh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Uh, WRVSU Policy Committee Anti Racism Policy Draft Number 4. This is 6.4. So Ethan's uh, on the policy committee. Um, so Ethan, feel free to jump in. What I can talk to folks about with draft four is that there were some changes suggested um, by the policy committee that had to do with some instructional parts of the policy. Um, the other thing that changed slightly based on feedback I received from some community members and um, a few board members 
was the statement that was part of the procedures, just so you know. The anti-racism statement, you'll see that um, white supremacy was removed. That's something we're going to need to discuss as a policy mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. on the 18th. Um, the feedback that I received um, on draft three, there was about two or three people that had questions about the statement. And so this statement is different. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's a big chunk of what we'll have to discuss on the 18th. A reminder that we have, are having a policy committee hearing um, on the 18th uh, for all the communities of the SU, it's SU-wide, mm -hmm. and uh, we're hopeful that folks will attend and share their thoughts or concerns. I will tell you that when draft four went out, <clears throat> I did get uh, some pretty critical feedback mm -hmm. uh, from community members. Now, how many? There was probably four different sets of parents that had some concerns about this policy, uh, specifically around the teaching of critical race theory, which is not what this policy represents. Yeah. Uh, my letter tried to address that previous uh, when we released uh, draft four to the community, uh, but I think those concerns still are there, and I've invited those um, community members and or parents and guardians to meet with me uh, to share their concerns one-on-one, -on -one. so I can listen and then share that back with you folks. Um, and so that's where we're at. And uh, as far as draft four, Ethan, you want to add some things? Yeah, a couple things. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the real thrust of this is not as much about education as it is about safety. The focus of this really is on ensuring that any of our students in the BIPOC community have a safe place to come, learn, and feel that they have a, a safe space and brave space to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's for all of our students to have a brave space, to share their feelings and beliefs. That's the idea of a brave space, mm -hmm. is that there can be some debate about things and that you can share your beliefs um, and your implicit or ex explicit bias, um, and that there's a way for you to talk that out. Mm -hmm. And so that's the idea of a brave space. Um, our focus is to teach, like I've said, U.S. and world history. And so what this policy does is speaks to the fact that we should be teaching about our history, um, but it does not get into suggesting what our curriculum it is. It does get into ensuring that our staff have training in equity mm -hmm. and ensuring that they feel like they have the tools necessary in the event that there's conflict or questioning and or debate within their classrooms. Which actually we would welcome because that's what should happen around and so we did start some PD. I think it's important for folks to know. Actually, Principal Stetson was part of that initial launch after the start of the year. Um, I believe we had we had representation from every district and uh, from each teaching staff. Was the number like in the thirties? It was. It was split between an elementary cohort and uh, middle school slash high school mm -hmm. cohort, and it probably was total of forty to fifty um, staff. Good. So that's a pretty good chunk of yeah. our um, close to 400 already. So the idea is, is that we'll pull that group back together if this policy is adopted to then give us some recommendations around what type of training we should pursue based on their experience. I, I'd just like to add um, a comment that I made, I believe it was the last policy committee, it was a while ago now. Um, I really felt like we, it's getting close to time to vote up or down on this and Try it out. That I think a really good policy. You think you're there, but doesn't it? It may not be perfect for everybody, but it's good. It's a good start, and to put it out there and see how it works. And uh, I, I don't think that's. You know, I, I think we're getting there, and I, I felt like there was very much a consensus of the SU board that we were getting close to being ready to vote on it. Um, uh, and I, I I feel that way too because um, I do think you could tweak it and tweak it. This is going to be, you know, the, this is controversial, you know, and I think it's very important that we all, I send it all, the mm -hmm. last draft to you all, and I really would encourage you to read it and to know it, because you're going to get questions about it from the public, and to be able to speak, um, and to bring those questions to the board meeting, our board meeting, so that we can really address them, and to send them on to me as the representative on the policy committee mm -hmm. as well, um, and to Jamie as well. Yeah, I just add, I mean, I think it's really important that the, the board understands that this is the policy of the board. 
you're directing the administration mm -hmm. to then lead the staff down the road of this policy, but I do think that there's um, some misinformation that this is Jamie's policy. And the board has been wrestling with this policy and working on it since last fall. Yeah. So, um, and it actually started off as an equity policy, which is what I had suggested, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I think we have other minority groups that we need to address as we move forward um, in our schools. But um, the board was very clear that they, were, they wanted to pursue anti-racism, at least the policy committee. And, and so I just think that that's important that folks know. That the equity, equity policy will follow. Yes. There was something we like, what that. happened to the equity policy? Why isn't this an equity policy? It's like because we felt this was the priority at this time. It was an anti-racism policy. The equity policy will definitely come along. It probably will be somewhat similar in, in form and language even. Um, but uh, um, so as I say, you know, know it and be prepared. Um, because it's going to come, and it, it, it will be, it is already controversial. When you and say there's going to be a hearing on the 14th, that's like a the vote 18th. Of 18th. 18th. That, yeah. Is that like the vote? This no, 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 that would just be the policy committee to answer questions, take feedback from the Got public, okay. to you. really have a conversation around it. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be virtual and in person, of course. September 18th? Okay. August. August 18th. Thank you. So it's two weeks from yeah. tomorrow. Yep, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha. Good. Any further questions? Patrick, do you have any further questions on this? Uh, um, I guess my only question as far as the, the educating, what, what about educating is, is an issue or like how, how far do you go with educating? I feel like kind of educating kind of goes hand in hand with, 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 with dealing with uh, racism and at, at least when it's between education, which is absolutely part of this policy, and curriculum. Curriculum, what, what is in the curriculum, yeah, um, is, is not specifically addressed in this policy. There is a general encouragement to teach openly about these issues in the curriculum, but education is very much a part of the policy in terms of letting everybody know and be a part of this process, brave spaces, and understanding what, what the implications. Does that help? Clarify that, Patrick? Yeah, definitely. Thank okay. you. Good. Welcome, Justine. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. Well, just to let you know, we're at um, uh, 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 6.5, no, actually 6.4, because we haven't quite finished it. Um, this is WRVSU Policy Committee Anti Racism Policy Draft Number 4. Um, uh, Jamie sort of gave an overview of where we are. Um, August 18th is a public forum um, on, on this issue. Um, I've been saying that we really we need to educate ourselves about this because there is going to be a lot of talk and that we need to know. And uh, from Patrick's question, the idea that it does not specifically address curriculum, but it does encourage openness of those teachers to including in their curriculum issues about this, but it's really about safe space and taking care of our minority members, particularly, um, what's the term? BIPOC. What's, the uh, BIPOC again? community? BIPOC. BIPOC. And what does that acronym mean again? Who knows? It's in the definition. Okay, good. I think we need to, again, it's, it's black, always important. It's people of color. People black of color. Yes. People good. Of color. Black indigenous people of color. Yeah. It's Again, just I just I always like, like to wrong. define an acronym so we all know what we're actually talking about. Um, good. Uh, do you have any questions at this time, Justine? I do not. I reviewed it. Um, 
along the way, um, but I don't have any questions. Great, thank you. Um, well, that any you. Bill? Yeah, I have a comment and a question. Um, comment is, it's been 57 years since Bloody Sunday in Selma. 57 years. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I'm a little older than that, but I remember that quite vividly in my lifetime. And so it's startling that when we talk about anti-racism, that should be controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you would think all the think time and all the energy and all the leadership and all the bravery that's been evidenced over time. Um, we've been further along. That said, I think it's certainly timely, well over time, that we do this. And we're not, we're not saying what the curriculum is. We're, we're talking about something that's still lingering and still important and makes our country incomplete until we can overcome this. Um, that's my comment. The question, Ethan, is where do we go from here? Is there a time frame after the hearing on the 18th yeah. that uh, the policy committee will then review the uh, comments uh, that they receive, feedback, do whatever final changes, and then vote this for consideration? That's of the, the plan. Board. I'd like to have this to you, uh, meaning the full board, in September. That's what, yeah. The August board remember. meeting is an executive board meeting, so the plan would be that we bring this to the in full September. board in September. So, and I, I see no reason, from what I've heard from the board, I see no reason why we wouldn't vote on it at that time. I know, it's giving I mean, sense. Why yeah, we've got yeah. plenty of readings. I think, we, uh, I think we've done and due the, diligence. Uh, you're saying full board meeting the full SU board or, or the full SU board? So full it goes SU. to the, few, the SU board first and then it Yeah, well, you'd vote in October. Okay, yeah. thank and you. And we'll vote in October. Okay. Is that the timeline? Good. Yeah. Thank you for asking that, Bill. Um, it's good to know that. Uh, Good. I think just one last issue, if I may, is that we have been challenged on, you know, that people don't know about this. Um, you know, that it's not being spread. In fact, it has been posted in the Herald, I think, more than once. Um, public, public things, it's been addressed in the meetings, it's been in the minutes. Um, you know, there is only so much we can do in terms of getting the word out there. I would ask people to be engaged and to show up show up on the 18th, uh, both support and against, um, you know, whatever, um, or questions, um, so that you can be fully informed and, and because um, it is a, the more, the more engagement we have about something like this, the stronger the policy is going to be. Good. Anything else? Good. Thank you. Let's move on. Are the graphs, are the graphs available online? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I uh, believe at the SU website. SU website, yes, thank you. Um, and spread the word of that. You know, I, I, I think I've sort of mentioned it to people, but I think it's a good thing to spread the word to even the building committee. You know, just start bringing it up in conversation. I'm just saying, because the people, um, I actually know too that my uh, wife, who's the Kimball librarian, one of the Kimball librarians, is very interested in Zero Policy because they're working on theirs as well, as are many people at this time. And they're curious to see where we've gone with it so far. So I, that would be great if we became a template for others to follow. Good. Uh, 6.5 Negotiations Committee. And I will say right at the beginning that I've heard compliments of you. Um, yeah, we've been negotiating and meeting um, with the power professional um, and their uh, union uh, leadership. Um, since June, we're going to be on a weekly basis. It's uh, we can't get into details, yeah. uh, but I could say that I barely say it's been constructive. It's been we're communicating well. I think we both sides respect where we're coming from and the importance of reaching an agreement as soon as possible. And I guess I'm hopeful that we can achieve that that goal um, sooner than later. That's great. Very good. Thank you. So Bill has not had Thursdays off, just so you Yeah, know. I was going to say. You yeah. haven't had Thursdays off. Thursdays, yeah. We didn't have July. I had last uh, Thursday off, so uh, I might be out of date, but... Um, no, you, you got it, though. Okay, you got it. Good. Great. Um, I don't know, there's not really much you can question about that, so... Good. Let's move on. Discussion items. Uh, seven. Seven point one. Spring. Oh, sorry. Oh, nope. Spring 2021 SBAC, again an acronym. What's that? Smarter Balance Assessment. 
Smarter Balance Assessment. And I will need a copy of this. I guess mine didn't print, so I Here. have everything <laughs> else but that. There you go. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I have it on uh, so anyway, let me finish. So this is the Spring 2021 SBAC Smarter Balance Action Assessment. 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 Thank you. Data report. Principal set. Oh yes, yeah, done. Didn't write it out. <laughs> Principal Stetson will provide an overview of the RSET Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium. That's All right. Helpful. Results for grades three through five. Three Excellent. through six for us. Sorry, um, three through six. Yeah. Thank you. No worries, happy to do morning. So what you'll see is just a little background. So there's an English language arts portion to this, which is given over the course of two days. And the first day is more um, sentence structure, vocabulary, comprehension type questions. And then the second day is a writing task or a performance task of some type. And that can be a wide variety of kids being given a prompt and having to write a narrative or having to do like an informative essay where they're reading different documents and developing something based on the prompt, an essay based on the prompt. And then the two are combined to create their assessment of whether students are um, proficient or higher in that. And um, also very similar for mathematics, it's, the first day is more um, practical problems, like you're given a problem and now solve, it could be a word problem, it could just be a math equation. And then the second day is also a performance task where kids are given a multi-step problem and they kind of have to write out all their steps and what, what they're thinking is and why. Um, so as you can see, we there hasn't been a state released um, proficiency rate yet and I'm not sure that that'll happen because of COVID and testing. Quite frankly, they it doesn't sound promising like that's gonna happen because it hasn't happened yet. Um, so we were able to kind of see ourselves in comparison to the rest of the supervisory union. So that's what you have in front of you is like, what does grade three look like as you wide and where do we compare as our side? Um, and the percentage is combined because we get some smaller numbers that mm. could become identifiable. Um, so we saw some great growth. You know, you look at our fourth grade group in uh, English language arts and 60% of them are uh, proficient or higher, which is a great celebration. And, um, where was that group there? and as well, again, um, fourth grade in math has also jumped as well as sixth grade in math. So um, it's great to see some growth. We definitely have a ways to go and room for improvement, but we have some celebration too when you look at how much kids have grown. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, and so, so this is not so comparable. To, this is comparable to earlier in the year. This is a percentage of growth compared to earlier. No, no, this is like compared to. Base, so if you look at the back, it's kind of in the summary piece. Um, when you look at that second paragraph, Amy talks about how to look at that. Perf who's considered proficient or higher? And basically, it's their performance on that test means they're tracking to demonstrate the knowledge and skills for that grade level. Okay. Um, Proficient by grade level. Right, exactly. And the scale score number kind of gives us the range of students' continuous score from the test. And was this SBAC taken in the fall as well? No, it's one Just time. Just once, once a year? Okay. And the problem we have is we, I don't have data from the prior year. Okay. So, so yeah. you'll start to see cohort data year to year. Okay. But um, we didn't do SBAC testing the prior year due to COVID. Yep, okay. Um, and so the other thing the AOE wants to caution everyone want to remind you is it's just that it's not the most reliable data this year, but what teachers will be doing is digging into this data this fall through our course that we have offered through the Upper Valley Educators Institute to look at trends and to look at what standards are we lacking. Okay. You know, you can start to look at data both as a district and then across the SU and start to analyze we're universally in the curriculum, are we not hitting on certain standards? And so that's how that data will start to be used okay. in teaching teams this fall, to identify where are the gaps in our curriculum and or our approach to instruction, mm -hmm. and to address that. Mm -hmm. um, this is how I understand things, so I just have to 
Does that mean that there is a number sort of missing here, which is what the goal of proficiency is for? 80. Is it is it eighty? Is, is 80. eighty? Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would tell you most supervisory unions set their goals to be eighty to eighty-five okay. percent. That's good. Uh, that's what research shows, right? You want eighty to eighty-five percent of your students on grade level, um, and then you'd want to, you know, about fifteen percent that may require a boost. And mm -hmm. out of that, you'd want about 10 to 12 percent who might need some targeted intervention, meaning small group, double dip. And then, you know, research shows that really our, our special ed population should be about 5 percent. Um, the research shows students who have specific learning disabilities is right around 5 percent. Mm -hmm. And so if our MTSS system starts working, one of the big data points we'll want to see is our special ed referrals decreasing across the SU because what that means is we're meeting students' needs universally um, and through our double dip via target intervention, your intervention as you hear about, uh, that it doesn't get to a point where they qualify for special ed. Special education still requires adverse effects, so what does that mean? It means that students essentially have to be at least, to so be in the bottom 15th percentile to qualify, means you've got to be at least one and a half grade levels behind. Mm -hmm. So, and you have to find adverse effect to qualify for special education in the state of Vermont. So, um, that is a data point when I bring it to the SU board and we talk about referrals, evaluations, and the percentage of our student population who's um, currently being served via special ed. That's a data point that I certainly am monitoring very closely mm -hmm. because as we get better at our universal instruction, then we should really keep students up. Mm -hmm. uh, I will also tell you one way, uh, one of the things to know about the Smarter Balance Assessment Consortium, it is hyper-focused on written expression. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to you guys about that before. That is not an area we've spent much time on as an SU, on uh, yep. professional development. And because communication is a big chunk of the math test as well. So it's not complete something in standard algorithm and get the correct answer. Like how most of us were learned to, right? Like this is how you do a, a problem in multiplication. You do it, you get the right answer. This is, here's a word problem, read it, comprehend it, complete it, now explain how you got there mm -hmm. and why. And so, you know, these scores will not come up until we get better at written expression as well. Uh, same as the writing piece. It's very much not, it's not the read this text and circle what you think the uh, main idea was, right? Like if you're good at that as comprehension, you're not going to be proficient on this test. So it's a tough test. For it absolutely is. Yeah, and it's very rigorous. And again, you know, when we sat down, the three of us sat down a couple weeks ago, and there was there's a real emphasis on more writing. Yeah, we just need to increase stamina. I mean, at, at, the, at the end of the day, um, as, you, as you're walking around our classrooms, we just we don't have students engaged in written expression enough. And so we just got to increase that. And again, part of that comes with our PD plan, right? Like, we got we to shine a light on it, and we got to provide teachers tools to teach it, and then we got to hold ourselves accountable to it. Um, you know, the good news is, as you start to look at our reading scores, though, our kids are reading to learn now. They weren't, right? So we wanted kids in third grade to be reading to learn, mm -hmm. not still trying to figure out how to read. And so we're getting better at that. We've got lots of data now at the SU that's saying our kids can read and that their fluency is increasing and that they can understand uh, comprehension. The issue that now is we got to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what we're looking to do. So that's good. There's some celebrations here, but there's a lot of work ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just to understand again, um, for my brain, um, <coughs> each step of this process that you say they went through, mm -hmm. that can be isolated to see where the strengths or weaknesses of that particular student is. Yes. But it's the score is the whole in general. So they yeah. might be doing quite well at this it and breaks then they it drop down, down. Like, for example in English language arts it breaks it down into four different areas uh -huh. and then you can even dive deeper if you wanted to with each area would we ever be able to see those breakdowns or is that complicated? you can see them as a district yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah I would be curious because I, I think 
It would also it understand this test a little better too. Yeah, we can bring back in September. I'm pretty certain we can give them the yeah, I, scale I, right score. Yeah, right now it's on the updates, so you can't log in, right? This yep. No, that's yeah. right. We'll do it in September. That'd be great. I'd love you to see that, so that you can yeah. see how we're going to start to handle it. Because you know, I think one of the 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 strength of numbers is you know what they say, and the weakness mm -hmm. of numbers is what they say. Right. And um, I think the more detail we can get into, the more we can defend or support you um, <laughs> in what's happening. Good. Uh, further questions about this, Bill? Yeah, I. On a learning curve, pretty steep, I yeah. guess. So on the test, I guess a couple of questions. One is, uh, does the English language arts include uh, reading comprehension? So that's part of it, but it's not straight reading. Right. It's not like here's a pass. It, there's a wide variety. Okay. With it's comprehension, that. analysis, yep. written expression. Mm -hmm. the whole, the whole um, how does this uh, bump up these results with our goals um, for um, for this uh, for this test, the SBAC English Math results and the science results? Did we have goals going into this last fiscal year, and how are we doing uh, in relationship to those goals? Well, the goal is again we want 80 to 85 percent of our kids proficient. So. The problem I have is I can't tell you, well, we made a 10% growth from one year to the next because I don't have baseline data from two years ago. Until next year. So what I will tell you is, is that in a COVID year, when we're in the 60 percentile range for our son, that's good. And if you look at the state average, that would be at or above. Just I'm basing that off of historical data when I've looked at these tests mm -hmm. in the past. So that's a positive trend. Uh, for us there. I will tell you, uh, there's a reason why we're talking about math all the time. The math scores are not good. Um, and uh, I think in general that our students' um, confidence in mathematics would speak to that. Right? Like I think that, I don't think that this is inaccurate data there. And I think again, when you look at your English language arts data, Bill, that um, written expression is an area that we are lacking it. And so, and the uh, older the students get on this test, the more that that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, in third grade, they have to write. And they expect quite a bit right. of actually writing mm -hmm. from them. But uh, that matters even more as you go into fourth, fifth, and sixth, because most of your comprehension is going to be reading a close passage and then having to write about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. I, and we haven't had a chance with our retreat yet, no. so uh, this is, I think I'll wait for that, but I, I think it's very helpful to um, 85% and that 10 to 12% and that 5% is, and then the question is, um, in this, and this isn't the only metric that we're using, but for this, um, I think it's helpful to know um, when we plan to get there, and mm -hmm. to the extent yep. that that's a, a real stretch, then I think the board should be made aware of it and be prepared to reward our team for achieving it. Mm -hmm. But I think we should try to shoot high. And to me, uh, I don't know um, how long it's going to take, but I think it's helpful to, to, to set a target. And, and, and that's something I'll be talking about more. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is, this, is, this is where the rubber hits the road. Yeah, no, this is the bottom. This is exactly why we're here. <laughs> This, um, so excellent. Um, yeah, so specific goal date, mm -hmm. absolutely. And um, and um, you know, I will say that there's there's folks that um, are critical of standardized tests, right? I don't fall in that camp. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you, as an educator, I think it's a data point. I don't think it's the only data point, but I do think it's on us to teach our students how to engage in rigorous material and demonstrate grit. Mm -hmm. And so this test requires grit. And um, mm -hmm. I think that that's an important thing that we're, we're educating on that and emphasizing it all the time. Because those, that, those are the type of students that we want leaving here to pursue their secondary and post-secondary pursuits. Mm -hmm. 
right? Like they can think critically. They can demonstrate grit. They have stamina. And so it's hard to argue against those things, and this test does measure that too. Um, I'll let everybody go first and I'll get back in my meeting. I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Um, Justine, questions about this? Nope, I'm all set. I'd, I'd like to see it broken down a little bit just so I can understand it a little better. Um, but no, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Patrick, questions? Sorry, you got cut off. Was that a... No, I'm all set. Okay, good. Um, my question is, in general, about standardized testing is that I really get concerned that it's testing things that aren't necessarily done all the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. That suddenly you're asking kids to write in ways or evaluate in ways that they're not being asked the rest of the year. And I think that's unfair and often will sh shock a kid. I, mean, I was one of those kids. Um, so I just ask that person, I, you know, as an individual board member and as a parent of a child, student, um, that you look as hard as you can to encourage teachers to teach, not that we're training for the test, but that if these are useful skills, then they should be part of the curriculum. Yeah. Right. Agreed. And that's why I said we've got to analyze and see our gaps. Mm -hmm. I know we've got gaps in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And this test measures the common core state standards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what it measures. Are those common core state standards that were adopted across the country? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's I don't I don't, I want us to dig into this data to see what are the trends mm -hmm. at district levels, but also at the SU level. I think we're going to notice that some districts are doing something really well, right? Mm -hmm. And so, all right, let's talk about it mm -hmm. and let's learn from it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see that as an SU, there's parts of the of the standards we're just missing, like you said, Ethan. We're not even teaching it. Yeah. So, okay, well, what's that about? And let's look at it. And so um, I'd like to use this, this, this data to inform our revised curriculum, mm -hmm. right? That's a big chunk of Onda's work moving forward is what do we want kids to know, understand, to be able to do at, e and at the end of each grade level that's understandable to our teachers and to our parents and guardians and community. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be, curriculum should be it's the end point for the year, and it should be easy to follow, and it should build upon itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be a secret. And, uh, right? And this has at, at the end of the day, years, uh, yeah. at the end of the day, Fountain of Pinnell is not a curriculum. Mm -hmm. That's a program. It's a tool. And it's a tool. Yeah. It's not a curriculum. And so we got to really get better at defining, again, what are those expectations vertically? And so, that stuff I get excited about talking about all night. Mm -hmm. You probably see me, I let up a little more than Bill did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's uh, some exciting work ahead. And I will tell you, like I said in my board report, I'm uh, just really thrilled um, thus far with Anda and her ability to connect with the principals and our teachers. And uh, I think in the curriculum and instructional world, we've got a really strong leader there. I think you're going to really grow to really enjoy her as you get to know her. Right. Well, I'm certainly excited that you're excited because yeah, 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 if you aren't talking about how to get there, how are you going to get there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Good. Moving on. Rochester High School status. Do you care about this at all? <laughs> uh, I, uh, first thing I'll say, I apologize. Uh, Vic asked, sent a request to me, and uh, I just forwarded today to Jamie, oh. and he didn't think we needed any special action for that, so that, okay. that, will, be, that will be released to you. It's basically the um, study committee, as I remember, or it's the grant committee, yes. um, getting access to the Black River Which is out there anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 public that's public document, yeah. document anyway, yeah. so. Well, it's, it's the, the CAD files. The, the CAD, CAD files, yeah, yeah, that's for much more. For, the, for whoever the successful consultant is. Yeah. So the USB drive I have in my desk? Yes. I have that, yeah. And this is that also have the um, <laughs> floor plans on it, but the should have all of that. Because yeah. did they ever print those out for us, or were they just in We have them in building, okay. in each building. Okay. But the, the CAD files, yeah. Tara has. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Support me. So it's like my hmm? Ford, I know I have oh. this thumb drive, USB thing in my desk. That's, That's important. Our side. 
Okay. But I was told never to lose it. So. <laughs> You're untrustable. Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, then you probably know as much about the grant. Yeah, sure. We, I'd be happy to you'd share. Be happy to yeah. inform us. Of so um, this uh, committee, volunteer committee, um, advising and um, supporting the select board, uh, worked with the select board and has uh, submitted a um, request for a grant uh, for planning project for the school to figure out feasibility for the kind of programs that we have in mind for it. We were awarded a grant of $50,000, plus there's a local match of in-kind service and cash equal to about 10% that we have to develop. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we issue, and we've retained, the town has retained uh, Two Rivers Wadakichi Planning uh, Commission to be the administrator of the grant. So uh, um, Victoria Littlefield, who is known to a lot of people here from the planning work that she's done in the past. She's the um, administrator of the grant, uh, deals with the funding agency in terms of all the paperwork, and will, has issued the RFP after we had input into developing the RFP. The RFP went out mid-July, is due back by uh, August 9th, uh, and we will review those uh, responses and make a recommendation to the select board uh, for their second meeting in August. That's the time track we're on. Um, and then um, you know, get going as fast as we can. Kind of, there have to be a contract, technically a contract between the consultant and the town uh, to initiate the actual work. Uh, the schedule within the um, request for proposal says to get a full draft done by uh, December. Um, hopefully it can go sooner, but you know, we'll just have to see how fast we can get it to move. Um, and uh, conclude uh, shortly thereafter. Um, so that's the status of the, uh, the feasibility study funding and the process so far. So the feasibility will be done, study will be done by early 2022? Yes, yes. it's supposed to be idea? totally completed in February. And that the reasoning behind, the, the timing is that if, if it's looking promising, uh, it's something that we would want to bring to, well, either way, <laughs> something we want to bring to the uh, town meeting in March. Uh, so there can be a full community-wide discussion of the findings, and and the select board would take that into consideration for making their uh, decisions around that. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and just to clarify, this is a feasibility grant that the select board um, had, did. Yes, no. It's, it's, yeah. it's not us, and it's yeah. not a, a community group. It is, is the, the select, select board, board. Rochester has pursued mm -hmm. they this are the grant, and they them. are moving moving forward on yes. that. Um, it, it just immediately raises the question that we uh, cannot avoid, is that right now I believe we have a September deadline for the building, for maintenance, heating of that building. And that I think the board um, needs to make a decision about this. Well, uh, I believe we got some quotes on the cost to to shut the building down, and it was mm -hmm. quite high. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel that the select board is uh, moving forward with trying to acquire and figure out what to do with this building. Mm -hmm. And I think they have, by getting this grant and moving forward, they have shown their interest. Good faith. Uh, so good yeah. faith interest. Mm -hmm. I am concerned with um, <laughs> the amount that it would cost to shut it down uh, versus the adverse effect it would have um, on that building, and how could we um, maybe look at doing things in a different way, since there is such a mm -hmm. um, step forward by the select board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, let's get further input on this. Um, I, mean, I think what we're looking at is an extension of our September date, and I think, um, I think it's reasonable to consider that we might even be thinking of extending it as far as this we're, it sounds like we're not going to get an answer from the town until the vote happens in March. Uh, it's possible. I mean, there, there are two schools of thought in that. But, uh, you know, that uh, one school of thought, I can't speak for the select board, obviously, but uh, mm -hmm. two schools of thought, yes, wait until all the info is in and make a decision. The other school of thought is um, just get access and in, in, in responsibility for the building and then figure out whether the town is going to keep it, sell it, um, develop it, um, 
do some, tear it down, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. But I think that uh, you know that's an unresolved issue. Again, so, I, I shouldn't speak for the I'm not speaking for the select board, but I, you know, it, I hear it's unresolved, and I'm um, I know we do have uh, Pat Harvey. Um, if you're available, uh, it would be great to hear you check in on this because I you you see our 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 you know. I don't want to call it bind, but we have a decision that we've already made. Um, I certainly feel that we should, it feels fine for me to extend, but I do feel that it shouldn't be an open-ended extension. I think it's reasonable to ask our public to accept a five-month or six-month extension with prorated, you know, whatever that's going to be, heating or something to keep it going in support of this grant. Um, and other board members may have a different uh, view about that. Um, um, what's, can you summarize the select board's thinking in terms of these two options that Vic presented? That you wait till everything's in and make a decision, or that you get, you get it under your belt, take it over to the town, the town takes it over, and then they figure out what to do with it. What do you think the select board is? Um, Vic is right on point with uh, where we're going with it. Um, we are planning, we, we have decided that we have to go to the voters to make a decision about uh, whether or not the voters want to acquire the building. That, and so we're targeting um, town meeting as that date. Okay. Um, there are still certain things about the building um, that the RSUD has not taken on um, any, any uh, the oil tank issue, um, there's still a lot of things that are out there that um, we haven't seen the school board prepare to transfer the building over to us either. So there's just no action on either side. I don't um, think that's actually unless, a... Unless I see... Well, I, I don't think that's a fair characterization. We've certainly been um, uh, preparing to move... Uh, the board's going to quote and would be prepared to do that, but... You know, we've been advised by our attorney that that's something that would be do, that would be negotiated. Yes, and it's not something we should point a sale. Yeah, it's not. Higher. Yeah, you've been certainly made aware of the condition of the oil tank, um, and even the estimates, as I believe we passed the estimates that we received on to you. So it's not like we've kept that a secret. It's we we said we weren't going to do this because we we're supposed to, our our mantra is as little money as possible going into that building. Um, until we know I what its future is. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I have seen no estimates for, I've seen no estimates for raising the oil tank. I can send it to you, Pat. It would have been way I, back last fall. Yeah, I'm we, pretty certain. Yeah, because I saw it. share. We, we, happy to send it again. The quote was back in October. Well, that's obviously a discussion then that we need to determine is how, how, if that is a topic, well, what are we going to do about what, that topic? What, so what other action would make you feel like we're ready? Because we're ready to hand this thing over as soon as possible. Uh, but we've made that point for yeah. months. That we've, as soon as we and got the final, final uh, uh, survey, we basically we sat down with you and I said, we're ready. We're ready. And uh, to say that we're dragging our feet about things, uh, I would have to need a specific list from you of what issues you think we are dragging our feet on, because I certainly haven't been aware of that. I thought we were sitting down okay. to negotiate and you were going back to the people. So, so yeah. I can provide you. Yes, please do, as soon as possible, so that we can take some action. Um, uh, we, uh, we have never uh, not made it clear when we were uh, pursuing this grant for the feasibility study, um, when as soon as we knew that this was going to take more time, we shared that oh, information yeah. with everybody. So uh, we're, we're not dragging our feet. No, no, I didn't, either, but I didn't part say of, you were. Part of the grant, part of the grant was uh, that we cannot transfer ownership of the property while we're in this feasibility study. Okay. They, oh, okay. Yeah. That's information, new information to us. Yeah. No, it. it's just reiterating what we, 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 we knew that before. Oh, did we? Yeah, when we, when we uh, give our blessing on the grant. 
It's a oh, condition okay. of the grant. Yeah. Grant and source. All right. Yeah. I should need. Yeah, I didn't remember that. Okay. Good. Good. Um, well, then in that case, so then we are. I think that's pretty clear. Then we're looking certainly for the completion of the grant, and most likely looking till at least March. So it sounds like we've gotten our answer. Okay. Well, it's definitely not going to transfer before a vote of the public in March. So the school board needs to accept that and just make a decision about, I, well, yeah. Yeah, I would like to see us take the money that we were going to use to shutter the building, to to not shutter the building, to be able to, I feel that it's completely detrimental to the building to completely drain it. And there is, it was quite a bit of funds that it was going to take. Mm -hmm. Plus well, increased let's, insurance. Let's and, make a motion on it then, I think. I think we want a motion with a date. I, I'd recommend, we don't, I mean, we said by the end of September, I just, I'll throw this out. Yeah, let's get some more I would, September 14th I would, or something. I would recommend that you put this on your September agenda. I agree. Okay. That Lyle, I thought I could was, have Lyle come. I thought it was yes. earlier September. I can have Lyle come mm -hmm. and give you all the figures. It can be warned okay. under an action item. Good. And then you can take action. I like Good. that. Thank I you. like that too. Thank, Thank you. you. Robert? Um, just, just a quick one. Um, I, it has been discussed that there might be some emergency funding for community action grants, but we couldn't pursue it because we won't own the building. Yeah. So, but the school perhaps could. Um, well, certainly, if anybody's out there wants to donate some money to the school to keep this building going, we would very much welcome that. <laughs> I'll just say that right now. Right. So, if you got a check for ten thousand dollars, we would. We looked into community action grants. Just so you know, mm -hmm. part of the issue around it was is that they want a plan, hmm. and we don't have a plan. Oh. <laughs> we need a blind donor. Somebody who's just like, so here, look into it. Take so, this. So we have a plan coming, but we don't yeah. have a budget on bills. Like yeah. yeah. Um, uh, good. All right. So what we've settled is we will give all, we'll give the oil tank information that we have to the select board, so that's not an issue. Um, I am curious. I thought the action on the playground was going to happen before. It's on. It's. It, it's, it's, it's in, in progress. Okay, good, good. What's the playground? Um, it's, the playground has to move to the boundary. The, the pre-K um, pre play, playground has to move. Um, uh, and just that we all have it in our heads that we are now looking, I would say, at least mid-March. That that's, that's the earliest we're going to be able to transfer this building because we'll have a clear vote from mm -hmm. the community. Yes. So that's the date, March, say, eyes of March is what we're looking mm -hmm. at. That's a, uh, and I think that's yeah. important to get that out to our public and to start, you know, so they're not surprised. It says power off, shutting down the system after 56 seconds. Cancel. Is it the <laughs> touch screen? Is it the TV screen? There oh, there you go. Um, okay. So while we're still on the, um, yeah. I know we're, we're now 14 minutes of our 10 minutes, but um, right. I was all wondering sure, what the yeah. status of the of contents in that building yes. are. There was a question Where we about, have things flagged to be moved over, like we're in the process, you know, Jesse is still waxed because you can look at yeah. this. Uh, it's still being waxed and teachers are going through and picking out what they need moved back over or don't okay. want, and then we'll kind of... And so nothing is uh, being given away at this point or being well, taken away from... We do have another school within our SU who is in need of some library tables. So they came and we know where they are, but they were in a bind. And the conversation I had because there was some panic over Tunbridge or the Thetford coming and getting Thetford some tables. What? It's Tunbridge. It's Tunbridge. Yeah. Okay. This was the, it was a phone chain kind of mm -hmm. comment. And I think we need to be careful about that mm -hmm. to make sure we get their facts correct. It was within the SU. It was there inventory. Are, there are a lot of tables yes. in that space. There are a lot of tables in that space. So um, I think uh, maybe at some point they'll have something we need. Yeah. Right? Well, here yeah. you go. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. We do try to share. Yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. Um, so, I mean, so the shop equipment, the tools in there, all we that. We haven't, I haven't touched yeah. that, and I'm protecting that because I know that's a really yeah. important piece of your Thank plan, you. or that's my understanding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. And, and the tables and chairs because, you know, hopefully Suzuki will come back again and other programs will use tables and chairs right. in classroom settings. Mm -hmm. um, There's more chairs and tables than you could possibly <laughs> get to yeah. do with over there. Okay. I, I, I mean, I hope they get to go back to full course Suzuki does next summer, but yeah. I could honestly say that there's still plenty. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, and as, as much as I definitely love helping out other people in RSU, I do want us to be conscious that the town of Rochester bought those with their taxes. You know, we inventoried that. So, okay. And, we have you know, we, we saw it as a school supply issue. Yeah. Okay. And there was a school that needed it. So. And yeah. like you said, you kind of and have a list so that hey, as we go forward, that maybe there'll be some reciprocal well. stuff. Well, well, sorry, there that. are curriculum books, too, and things of that nature that right. we've been dispersing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be a point of dumpstering uh, textbooks. When you guys give us the like thumbs up, yeah. Tim, is still, yeah. Tim Pratt has made a shoot on the back mezzanine steps because there are still significant number of student records up in the mezzanine. And Tim also spent some quality time with myself and Jesse and Ellen today as we moved the fire safe vault cabinet over here, which was not an easy um, feat. No. Um, so things can be locked up and protected. So now we'll be able to move all the student records that are in the mezzanine that need to come down versus what needs to go to microfilm. But that'll all be able to right. come down and be locked over here. Um, but there are things like textbooks and English book score and things like that. And that you know, you're probably pretty close to a point of a dumpster up there. Well, because they're obsolete. Yeah, they're obsolete. Yeah. I mean, okay. Soviet Union and some social studies textbooks. Well, thank you. No, that gives no, no Russia. So no. <laughs> as Bill will attest, we uh, just so that the, the public knows that all of the board uh, has taken a tour now of the high school building. Um, I think I'm, I'm almost ready for another one too, um, just because it was it, it, I couldn't spend more time. Uh, both Bill and I started picking through books, of course, which takes you know <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Um, but uh, you do get a sense, and I think we made the right decision with Suzuki as far as letting them use the south end of the building. Um, the other end of the building was just not ready for people to be in, and I think that was a good decision. Um, uh, yeah, so I know it's been used as, as storage. I, I know Stockbridge yeah. has been able to utilize that area to store multiple truckloads of their of mm -hmm. stuff. Which it's is really just down to one truckload and then some science stuff that the science people need to. I mean, it has. There's no doubt about it. But it's become a catch-all for things that people are mm -hmm. not. Yep using instructionally anymore <laughs> at any level. Decisions need to be made in K through 12. So I mean, we've okay. gone through and done supplies, which has been great because we found some great things, some post-it notes, all those fun things that we can use and not have to reorder. So wonderful. Right. That's okay. huge. Thank you. Yeah. So um, in terms of a timeline mm -hmm. of being sort of cleared out for anything that isn't sort of functional, tables, chairs, mm -hmm things like that, what are we what are we looking at? Obviously school is gonna start up pretty soon. It's gonna get time wise might get a little harder to work on it. Well I think they need to concentrate on the academic records, the sensitive information well, and not necessarily all the little well, I'm just saying, but pieces we, of everything else. It is our goal as part of this process of clearing the building, getting it ready, being ready to transfer. Obviously this is an issue that we aren't ready to transfer because there is still school stuff in there. Um, that is well, I think we could clear the school stuff out pretty swiftly once we realize, I think part of the issue too, is that we dragged our feet a bit, not knowing exactly what the other party may want, mm -hmm. right? right? And again, that's part of the negotiation piece. Mm -hmm. So the quicker we can get the table and hash out those details around negotiation, then it would give us clearer direction around right. what can we just that's true. We don't know. So I think that that is part of the issue. And yeah. that's also part of this feasibility study. What is feasible to be in there? So mm -hmm. what type of equipment is needed? So certainly there? books so. and stuff, yeah, we can keep on banging through that. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that it's not clear to us necessarily what folks may want or not. But like books, books are great. Lockers, yeah. things like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like right. I know the shop stuff. Shop, yeah. yeah. So, I, do, that's, I mean, that's that's think, out I think we're at like, the bigger items. Well, yeah, the science, the science stuff that is not... Uh, the yeah. chemical folks need to come in. And and that's why I say the science folks are going to get together that know way more about some chemical things than I know yeah. and help because you have to have someone come in and dispose of that properly. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, they need to be disposed of. So I think you can't wait on that. That will started, not help your feasibility <laughs> study, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. We're, we've started a process, I guess... Um, Keep us posted mm -hmm. as to what you're doing when okay. um, by each as part of a principal's report. Even sure. there. I think that would be great to have that be part of the principal's report, so we know specifically between meetings what actions have happened. So we can, you know, we can let our, our public know what process we're in, because that obviously that is an obstacle, yep. you know, to any. Early, early.
That's part of um, we, we can provide you with uh, a, a real base information about what we plan on doing with the building, and that would point towards what we would be concerned about leaving the building. Um, if we mm -hmm. do install an adult daycare, we're going to need lots of tables and chairs. So we're concerned about retaining those items. Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a daycare, a ch children's daycare, maybe not so much the tall tables and chairs, but um, we will need some certain furniture for that as well. And, um, you know, Vic and Robert can certainly speak uh, for the maker space of, of what we need. So we could, we could give an outline of the types of um, furniture that and things that we would need um, based on what, what's in there. Right, yeah, Vic? But also help the process if we could see the inventory list. Sure. Yeah. Or we can walk through it, whatever is yeah. easier. We'll it might so be easier to yeah, walk through when you say you have an idea. I do think a list from you would be great, and, and then we can pair it to right. you know, yeah. what yeah. you yeah. want, what you yeah. that's yeah. That makes yeah. it pretty straightforward. Okay. So can we have those both by our next meeting? Inventory list and a need program want list. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have an inventory list created already, or is that something you're going to need to do? Um, I think there's parts and pieces started. I really need to talk to Jesse because that's her realm. Okay, well, maybe it can be more of a discussion yeah. between yeah. you guys rather than like you each having to have this big right. yeah. yeah. I think it's probably list, yeah. easier to, quite frankly, just walk through and mark. Like, just, okay. just like a tag. <laughs> so. I call it the sticky notes. Yeah. yeah. We, we do have an inventory list for the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Pat again. And and the last the last item on about contents. Um, if we're going to start tossing um, certain things away, is there any discussion about giving um, like the plaques and awards and the um, sentimental sort mm. of thing to the Historical Society of Rochester so that they can store. Yeah. I'm not going to throw away trophies or plaques or no, things of no. that already. Um, uh, Jersey, I don't think you should. Uh, no, either. my previous you, you experience, I was gonna say you have experience through it in the previous merger. I will gladly turn that over to someone else. <laughs> yeah. Part of that right. I believe, believe the historical society would be willing to take it and store it for the time being. Okay. Is that who 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 should we be talking to? Because that would be great to start getting that stuff out now. The strong side. Nancy. Nancy Woolley. Nancy Woolley. They might want to rent some of the high school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so might not need to move out. They might actually want to be, they want them put their want, name out of doors. But yeah. maybe they would be interested in inventorying it for us. I, I, that would be very useful because it's certainly been very useful because I, I don't think we should ask our principals to be inventorying no. historical yeah. items. Exactly. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, what was the last name, Nancy? Nancy Woolley, W O L E Y. Oh, 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 yeah. And she's a, yeah, she's a, okay. and I think, yeah, if, they, if we could ask them to inventory, that would be excellent. Great. Love this topic, but we are at 24 yep. minutes Thank on you. that. So okay, we it's totally well, fine. So I just, you know, yep. if you, if on the I time people are ready to at least look at knowledge. I appreciate it. your. Um, and this is, this is a big, it this is, is a very big. big thing. And it's very good to keep it a full discussion because we haven't talked about it a lot in a while. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, this is good for yes. everyone to hear. The discussion, select board, envision, and us. Right. Thank you very good. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. And thank you, Pat. Much appreciated. Uh, very good. 7.3, Stockbridge Generator Project Bids. I thought Lyle was getting on, but we must have not mm -hmm. lost it. That's on me for not reminding me. So um, I can pass this around. What it shows is that Lyle put out to bid the need for the Stockbridge generator. Um, he, I believe it's five companies he reached out to, four declined to bid. Four, yep. um, And all the documentation Three. is in the file that um, Tara has in front of her. And then and Brookfield, Brookfield, yeah. Brookfield Service. I think it's right on the top, Tara. Yes, Brookfield. Mm -hmm. No, was it Brookfield who had given us the quote before? Yeah. Yeah, so they came back and gave us a quote, and I believe it's 20, Ethan, you have it in front. It's $28,653. Yeah. And that is fully installed, wired, 
everything correct. Doug, um, let's see. I can I can read this if you would like. Yeah, what's the, the concrete? Forty-eight kilowatt. I think the concrete pad is the only thing that's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, pro works. controller, program upload generator controller software, five-year warranty, battery for generator unit, dealer prep testing, convert unit to LP gas, convert engine to cold weather operation, install engine block heater, install twelve volt heavy duty interstate battery, Kohler amp transfer switch and some other electrical specifics. Uh, install full building surge protection, heater for the ATS, engineering plans, complete wiring of the system, complete generator mechanical installation. Install pre, oh no, install a precast cement pad. Oh, okay. It's there, it's yeah. there. Trench of glass line backfill, backfill by others. Yes, well, maybe that, I think sorry, that was the piece. The, it has to be done. Yeah, they just don't do that work. Yeah, right. they just don't do the back. Yeah, they have come and spray painted uh -huh. where it should go and what needs to be done yep. and where dig safe needs to be. And that is that is installed per scope of work above. Yep. So the other thing, Lyle, I know wanted to add to you guys is that uh, he spec this out to ensure that if we upgrade the uh, HVAC system mm -hmm. uh, based on remember we're doing those audits. Mm -hmm. Um, is that if that work was to take place over the next two summers, and let's say we overhaul the HVAC system in that building, that this would be large enough to run that and operate it, oh. the generator. So if we right. lose power, we don't lose the ability to continue to push our air around. Mm -hmm. We get good high quality air and heat throughout the building. So good. that was just something that he wanted you to know. And he did also set up a service plan. With it as oh, well. Great. That'll be a separate annual expense. expense yes. But he the, provided the some guidance on how frequently to service it for the first three years and then um, moving forward. After Do that. we pay that now for this generator? The service fee? Yes. No, this would be like a year out after it's No, I'm saying for My the sense one, is the one for this building. We don't have a service plan probably. probably oh, not. yeah, I think this, we this should. One is, this one is service. Anyway, but, but is it paid for by the town? I've never seen it before. Yeah, so I think, because I, I think it's emergency management put it together. I have a meeting with them. So I think we should, because it may be an expense that we might want to parallel there that becomes an ask the select board of Rochester, a select board of Stockbridge to take on the expense of maintenance because it's an emergency shelter issue, okay. correct? Yeah, yeah, that's something we, we, we... I think just find out understand. what the situation here is, and I think we should parallel it, in, fair, in fairness. Can, yeah. Or at least, you know, have that discussion. Yes, because yes. Because yeah. you know, if it is a emergency shelter in Stockbridge, then it is um, definitely benefiting the whole community, and how can we help uh, more uh, you know, with those costs? Okay. Um, now, I love the generator idea. We have... Uh, it's better. We, we looked at like batteries and solar and like that type of stuff once and it was just like astronomical or just not efficient for a industrial sized building. I don't, is that you, correct? My sense is that you won't have enough. Not to, to be able to, to it's on well water, so not to be able to do, do heat, everything. water, yeah. and electricity. It's a lot of power. Okay. Yeah, it takes a lot of it, power. It would be comparable, comparable costs if. You know, based on what my battery costs and how many kilowatts you want, you're going to be in the same ballpark yeah. uh, or more. You're talking 40, you said 47 kilowatts, 48 kilowatts? Yes, that sounds right. Yeah, 40, 48. 48. 48. And that's a good. Right, so you, know, you'd be, you need at least two, yeah, I don't think two, we're double, money. two, yeah. two double power walls. Well, and Plus yeah. the fact that when this happens, often it's in, I mean, I've been off the grid for years, and when this yeah. stuff happens is often um, not only lightning storms, but it also happens in the winter. Yeah. And when the snow load on solar can negate your solar. Well, well battery would battery would come off the grid and give you oh, I see. a few yeah. days storage, but the thing is, is that it won't be as long lasting. As, yeah. as long as you can provide fuel to the generator, you've got it forever. And uh, that will indeed be able to us to keep school open by having a generator. It provides phone and all, because I know we had an issue here in Rochester that we had the generator, but we had no phone, so we had still had to close school. So um, 
Um, just Those decisions seem to be made prior to my tenure. Okay. We had an issue with that in Chelsea earlier this year, and it was clear to us we were able to get phones figured out. Right. Everybody. So we weren't needed. We didn't need to close school okay. uh, because of a phone issue. And I'm looking at Ray because he knows how grumpy I got about it. Uh, so <laughs> that's how I was happy that the decision got made in my okay. group. But anyways, but the, this, uh, this would ensure yeah, that we should be able to continue to, continue to close school. school. Yeah. yeah, which uh, you know, oftentimes in a without power, it is a better place for the kids to Absolutely. be than, yeah, yep. and to be able to be fed. I mean, that yeah. was uh, in my past um, position in Williamstown. We put one in, and it was that. It was just that. It was a focus on. Not having, not losing power, having it be cold, the whole town's cold, and now we've got our kids at homes cold, right, where their parents are at work. So it became a safety thing for us, too, to be able to say, well, guess what? We can still heat the school, serve lunch, and welcome our students. And so that's, that was really how we weighed that decision, is that we were able to stay open and do that. And there was a pretty big windstorm in November a few years ago That's right. that necessitated that conversation for us. I think we ended up being down two or three days um, right. because of that. Stockford. Yeah. And Williamstown. Well, probably you guys Stockford were too. We were. Well, that's why Amy's talking about Rochester had power but no phone lines. Stockbridge had, yeah, it was two days. Not Question, has the board or staff discussed this, the backup generator and the importance of it and everything else like that with the Stockbridge Select Board? Um, with the Select Board? Or members of the board? Members, but I don't believe they're on the board and Jim Chance isn't on the board, correct? Yeah, yeah. No, Jim's still Jim on the board. Is, but not um, uh, not, not Pelletier. Uh, not Mark. Not Mark. Yeah, Thank you, I got that yeah. Um Yes. So Jim was part of the initial conversation and really a driving force to try and get this started two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, be timely to meet with the, the select board and, and um, tell them what's going on. I think uh, the school is a community resource. Mm -hmm. a, part of, a huge part of that is the education of our children. But it's also, uh, going back to Irene and before, uh, that was our emergency center. That's where the helicopters came down, that's where the National Guard, that's where we mobilized. Uh, that's where we had our emergency meetings. Uh, we need that to be available 724 for mm -hmm. all those reasons. And so I think it's appropriate. I don't know whether the boards discuss what, to what extent um, you want some cost sharing in here or, or financial support. Uh, and I think it would probably be helpful to have some sense of that, but um, you know, this goes well beyond the school, like so much of what the school does. Well, it, again, I'm not sure, as I remember, Robert, I don't think the school paid for this generator to be put in. No, I don't believe it did. Yeah, I, I, think I believe it was, it was in with a grant. I, I can't yeah. remember, but yeah, I believe yeah, yeah. it was with a grant, and I believe we pay, it's in the budget to, mm -hmm. every, every year to do maintenance on it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I think that is. Timely. Well, this came up based on uh, a request from you to put it on yep. the agenda. Yep, because it was uh, something we had and I sort of dropped, and I do believe it's a priority. And so, you know, the board could certainly um, appoint someone to be a representative and go to the town selectman to discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't have to take action tonight. Is this is this available electronically or? Can I get a yeah. copy of this estimate so we can? I have it on electronic uh, Great. If you could cool. send it and to me and I'll send the, it the uh, You know, the other thing to know is is the other discussion item is how to pay for it. Yep. Is that there is um, funds in a reserve account, um, which Stockbridge did contribute. Right. And so that was going to be our recommendation. So we take the money from that. That reserve fund. Mm hmm well, I do want to go forward with this project. Mm -hmm. I think that it would be right to talk to the select board and ask their support and see if the, uh, the Stockbridge Select Board. And I think we should go forward with it and, and maybe be ready to pay for it out of that building uh, reserve fund that, that Stockbridge has always ha you know, had originally put their money into. But I think if um, the town of Stockbridge is willing to part be a partner with us at all on it, I think that would be beneficial. 
Mm -hmm. um, we do have the service plan going forward annually. That could be maybe something they'd be willing to um, mm -hmm. to, to take on. Excuse me, take on, or um, maybe they are willing to put some money in towards purchasing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do want to go forward with this. Um, as yeah, as a Rochester, other Rochester Lift Board, I definitely do too. I'd like to hear um, from our other uh, Stockbridge members. Uh, Justine, do you have anything to say about this? Uh, I'm definitely on board with this, uh, especially because of the emergency shelter idea. Um, I think it's really important. I don't think I'm the one to go to the select board since my husband is on the select board. But mm -hmm. I think that we should definitely <laughs> approach the select board and see if they want to team up. Um, it, I think it's a great idea. And we should keep going. Good. Thank you. Patrick. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a, a great a great resource to have um, for both the school community and the town itself. Um, I did uh have a conversation a while back um about possibly being able to help um with with installing it which is still a possibility and i, I have had a conversation with my master electrician and electrician um that worked directly for me and um i can kind of circle back to this week and and have another discussion and see um what the, what their thoughts are because i even can provide the digging um, and I don't mind, you know, as long as the materials and everything got paid for, I think that, you know, I could be willing to, um, basically volunteer our time to do it. So, um, I can, you know, I can't guarantee it yet, but I think it's worth me just taking a look at that. And if that's a possibility, it can save a lot of money. Um, so I don't know what, what everybody's thoughts are on that. Well, first off, Patrick, I want to apologize because you left me a, a detailed uh, voicemail uh, some months ago uh, of talking about this, and I forgot to get back to you about it, so I apologize. Um, but yes, I think um, any way you could help. Um, uh, and this is, is it great, Jamie? Uh, Patrick, would you be uh, willing to sit down with Lyle, who kind of does the consulting work across the SU on these projects? get up to speed, work with him, and then would you be willing, if the board's wanting to try to take action on this next month, be able to go to the Stockbridge board to get a general sense of their thoughts prior to September? Is it, do you have availability to do that? Or Yeah, no, I, I could definitely make some time to do that. Great. Well, fantastic. So, Patrick, I'm going to email you tomorrow on your SWRVSU email and put you in touch okay. with Lyle. Uh, just so the board knows that Brookfield is prepared to take action on this as soon as we're ready. Great. Okay. 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 Great. Um, so yeah, as soon as we can hear from the select board, I think that idea of taking on the maintenance sounds great. Because it does sound like one of the things that M strung us, I think that's the word, um, before was the financial. And I do believe that, I believe that the, that um, I mean, do we want to vote on it tonight as far as how we pay for it, or do we want to wait till mm -hmm. September? We could wait. I guess we could wait one more month. Do you have more information? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I know. From the select board. Yeah, I'm always like, go, go, go. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's good. Good for. I people. think we should plan on definitely taking action. Yes. On the high school next part and what, whether we hear from the yes. select board or not, yeah, we right. will take action at our next meeting. Great. That's good. Thank you, Patrick. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, excellent. So now, board retreat. annual board retreat, 7-5. Sounds good. Let's do it. Let's when? do it. When? <laughs> it's the when. Where? Uh, Justine, I know um, uh, your schedule is, is, I think, in some ways the most problematic. Is a, is a Saturday morning? Is a Sunday? What's, what's? Yeah, I can do weekends. Okay. I just don't have any more uh, time off. Take during the weekday. Gotcha. So, yep. Yep. That's the um, only thing. So, calendar. Let's see. We would like this. Are we talking? Are we talking morning, afternoon? Uh, I love mornings. 
I'm much fresher in the morning as far as meetings, personally. It makes it, it Providing breakfast? And on and on and on. Uh, and as long as we got the coffee. Saturday, yeah, well, that's it. I mean, we get, you know, Saturday morning, Sandy's is open. If we do it here, we could get, you know, coffee and very nice baked goods from there. Uh, sa um, what am I looking at here? So in September, the 4th, the 11th, the Saturday morning, the 18th. Did anything jump out? I know I've got something Sunday the 12th, but... Um, 11th is Harvest Fair. What's that? 11th is Harvest Fair. Thank you. Okay, so let's not... 4th? No, That's Labor Day weekend. That's Labor Day weekend. Ah, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, nope. All right, we're bumping into the 20... Well, what about the 28th? August 28th. Yes, so. Uh, right before school starts, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah shopping. Um, for me, okay, yeah. Should we, um, do you have a little idea of what topics you're going to cover? Yeah, so that... Well, he's got a, um, Jamie's got an agenda. Okay, that, that's yeah, what I, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, we just kind no, of cover up with the time you get no, I mean, no, like, no, the most point, no, no, he's got some definite ideas, like and I know you build has some very great. definite ideas. Wonderful. No, I think, okay. I think then let's, let's go 18? to the 18th is the next available. Well, that's so Summer's Fair. Fair. Well, please, that you Saturday? have to go Sunday morning, Saturday morning, Summer's Fair. I can do that. Yeah, Saturday morning, 18th. 18th? September. September. Justine's going to thumbs up. Patrick? Sure. You go guys ahead. picked dates right between two weekend horse shows. That was perfect. Great. <laughs> I'm very, I knew. I told you I should wait to come back because I knew your horse schedule was yeah. a little crazy. And, and I told them, <laughs> you, 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 you don't even need me. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, Lindy, what, what time? Um, nine to noon. It'd be great. Nine to yep. noon and here. You can do it here or at someone's house. That's up to you guys. Uh, I'm just saying, here, Rochester, because Sandy's is there. Um, <laughs> and we could get good tray of well, it be nice. baked goods, stuff I think like that's that. That's a nice idea. Yeah. Um, I like this. This is a very nice room. You put the things up and the sun's on the other oh, side. No, it's a very nice room. Good to meet Plus, it does a publicly warmed meeting that anybody is. can attend. Can attend. So I think that's to do it here. All right. Nine to noon on the 18th. Right? Um, by coming into the school, is that going to be a problem depending on? Okay. I uh, yeah, I don't expect that they're going to limit access to okay. buildings this year. Okay. I think it's really just going to be about masks. But we will have to. Okay. So well, we bring we're a vaccinated, so we don't have to. I think it's going to be when students are in the building. So gotcha. We're okay. So I think Saturday should be okay. Great. Um, Saturday, nine to noon. Um, you talked about having just a casual lunch at the end of it. Yeah, that's what so I that talked about. So in that right. case, we would do noon to one, and lunch. one would be lunch. Noon, nine to noon is the meeting, is the retreat, and then one at, at noon to one would be lunch. How do we feel about that, Justine? We're fine. I can, I can be there. Good. Patrick? Pat? Yeah, sure. Good. Bill? Jamie? Yes. Yep. Lindy? Yeah. Jamie? Great. I don't need to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you do. Um, yes, yeah. I just think it's yeah on the assumption. Great, we got it. We got a date. Um, Jamie, you already have the beginnings of an agenda for that. That's a little bit, yeah, yeah. Some ideas. And I think Bill definitely has some Please, ideas. Please, yeah, send if them my way, and we can connect to Bill. Send your ideas, and I think be realistic. I think we need to be realistic. Three hours, so that we, instead of cramming it yeah. jam full, we pick our top three. That we and we can review the agenda as part of the agenda in September. Excellent. I think that's a very good idea. Because we'll have had our regular Excellent. September. We can have a so bring your ideas, ideas, bring your ideas, all of them, and then we'll winnow it down to three or four that are the real key well, ones. We did that in Stratford um, in great. June, and that worked well. And Excellent. We had folks vote on like their top three. Very good. Glad we're doing this. Thank you all. Uh, great. Um, boy, then we are Eight one provide approval. Yep. Uh, Secretary General Rochester and eight three interview candidates for vacant Rochester school board. Anybody want to be on the school board? <laughs> we did get a letter. Yay! Oh, did <laughs> Some kid just said they wanted yes. to. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. Jenna is in. What? <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, 
Uh, welcome, Robert. I assume this is why you're here. Yes. You would like to be oh, on our school board. I'm volunteering to be on the school I'm volunteering to be That's on the school board. That's a different set. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> like to hear it. I see. I've been on the school board before. Yeah. So well, I was going to say, do you have any experience in this line? Yes, obviously. 13 years. Some of you don't know. 13 years. Not, not continuously. I got called back once or twice. Uh -huh. I got right. to uh, fill in for people who were coming off the board. As a matter of fact, I, my first term was from someone dropping out, and then I got elected a few times. So. Um, and, and, you know, I have a lot of experience, but a lot of it is very dated. I mean, the, even in the short periods of time when I came back, I kept on finding that all sorts of rules had changed and how schools operated to change. So it's, I can't even imagine how it is. So I will be counting on everybody to, to uh, break me up to speak. Well, I don't want to you know, tip the table over in my eagerness to embrace you and bring you on the board. <laughs> but um, basically, yeah, hold on to your coffee. Um, I personally would love to have you. Um, uh, and I think you're. There, there are some tips I can give, like. Well, some of the best negotiations I ever had was, was um, uh, with Ms., uh, Mrs. Borden, and she always brought wine to the negotiations. <laughs> and we had a great time. <laughs> I think it's and, I, and we negotiated a great contest. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm not sure if you're um, allowed to do that anymore. But. Yeah, no, no, of course not. Because nothing's fun anymore. Um, and do we have any further questions for uh, Robert? Justine? Hi, Robert. I uh, well, I do. You have any exciting visions that you wanted to share with us in in joining the board, other than the things that you just said about being dated? <laughs> oh uh, well, you know, I'm I'm tend to be a little outspoken. I mean, I'm certainly a big advocate for open meeting law, as you may have heard from me before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm very. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm really demanding as far as the letter of the law, and and very push push for the spirit of the law, on on it. But as far as um, uh, 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 I, I'm very encouraged about the way you know the curriculum, I mean the, the integration of the te of the testing with directing curriculum in a in a real fashion. And I hope that it's been. I've been told that so many times before, but it's uh, but I'm I'm hearing the the real steps that that could make that work, and I'll be very looking forward to to hearing about that and, and discussing that because that's always been you know in in the past I've described that you know being on the school board is like pushing your pushing up against the wall. You know, just a, a brick wall, and trying to get change, changes and, and move, move things, uh, which can be discouraging. But things do do change, and things do happen. And I'm looking. I'm I'm very excited about what what I'm hearing on curriculum development. That would, for me, that would be the one reason to have you, is that you have the experience of hearing it before, mm -hmm. and not seeing it play out, mm -hmm. and knowing what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And so you could. We can hold them and say, ah, I've heard that before. Where's your, where's your proof? So that's another reason. Anything else, Justine? You? No, thank you. That, thank you. Was, that was my question. Patrick? Question? No, I think, I think it's on Bill. Great. Bill? No, I'm great to have you join us. Amy? No, great. Excellent. There's nepotism here, though, isn't there? <laughs> Be careful of that. Do you know these two are related? I do. Yes. Oh, see, now you throw us under the bus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can't take you, Robert. I'm sorry. No. no, I don't think it's close enough to actually have any bearing on it all. Okay. Oh, good. Um, uh, so, the uh, board could just make a motion and do it in a point. Uh, well, or you could go in executive session to debate, but that's no, usually if we have multiple I candidates. I don't, I don't not, a, not on my account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I would entertain a motion to accept Robert Mayer as uh, the third Rochester um, board member to fill out the term. Uh, it's a two years still to go. So know. you can only appoint to the next election. Okay, got you. Good. So Thank just you. To appoint to the next election. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, um, sorry, May for you guys. Someone make that motion. 
um, to appoint Robert Mayer um, to show. Sure, so moved. I just was trying to let somebody else do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a second. Second, second from Bill. So anyway. Excellent. Um, all in favor, Justine? Aye. Patrick? Aye. Bill? Yes. Amy? Aye. Ethan? Aye. Guys, have it. Welcome. I uh, need to get sworn in, as you probably remember. Um, and, uh, and soon we'll look forward to having you as official board member at our next meeting. And Robert, we'll get you all the VSBA stuff. Yeah. I've got a new board orientation folder that we've created that I'll send you. Um, and the SU board has committed to um, a board tr annual, uh, regular board training calendar that all board members will be invited to attend, whether they're voting members or not. That's great. Um, for yeah, for PD good. for the board and stuff. And so that will roll out um, starting actually, it's um, in September, I believe. Yeah, September. And the way we did it is they're just going to be like 30 to 45 minute P PD, do that, and then we get right to our board meeting. Nice. And get to work. Mm -hmm. um, and we're hopeful that, that we can still keep those to about two and a half hour meetings, even based on that. That's great. So, so. Very good. Thank you, Robert. Um, bu -bu -bu uh, new hires and resignations, correct? All new hires. Yeah, I was going to say, I just have new hires. <laughs> good, thank you. Right. So, uh, for our Rochester 1 2 position, it's uh, we'll recommend you to the board of Megan Cornelia. How do you pronounce that name? Cornelia. She might correct me on that. Oh, it's not Cornaglia? <laughs> She said it as Cornelia. That's after Interesting. Okay. I could be getting that wrong. Um, I mean, it's it's looks a tough. You could actually met her, Amy, when we interviewed for the position. Oh, she had a different last name at that point. Yes. Okay. You've met her before. So. Okay. Well, then my questions that I had are answered. Okay. <laughs> um. So and she seems like a great fit, and she's already been it. We interviewed her last year for the long term sub position for sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And I would say the only difference between her and the candidate we went with is she had all primary grade experience in terms of student teaching and substituting and tutoring. And we just didn't feel like that would be a good fit for the group of kids that we were going to have her. Mm -hmm. um, well, I thought she was from that previous interview. I thought she was very enthusiastic. Yeah. I did think she would be a good part of the team. Um, you know, my concern looking at her resume was just that she had been out of teaching for so long almost since she graduated from from so if you look at the timeline in 2008 was a recession in the education world which meant yeah. it was pretty hard to get into education specifically where she had moved to colorado specifically to be able to get um a teaching job at that time when you weren't from the teaching program in colorado mm -hmm. so um she stuck with it and done some tutoring things on the side and i think she'll be a great a great fit for our Okay. Yeah, she looked like a good, or she, mm -hmm. yeah. Onda interviewed her. I was gone. Yeah. And Onda had really positive things to say mm -hmm. about her as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Great. And, and then, then yeah, our recommendation for the second and third grade position in Stockbridge is Morgan Demers. And Morgan is a recent graduate of Castleton University, like a, a year ago, over a year ago. And she spent her past uh, year, this in, interim year, as the floating sub in Barry City Schools. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's worked as a literacy, specifically she ended up being in literacy intervention for about six months of the year. So really strong, again, and great um, experience in some social emotional pieces as well that we're looking forward to utilizing. And then um, our school nurse for both campuses is, we're recommending Chelsea Mayer. You may notice the similarity with names. I did but ask. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can I vote on her. She's like cousins, uh, cousin by cousins marriage. by marriage. Can I vote on each other's name? No, it's getting off very distant. Yeah, yeah I, I did ask because I kind yeah, of the connection. Fine. Okay. Great. Um, and she comes to us from a home health uh, background and has actually been in the Rochester Stockbridge communities working in home health already homes as a school nurse and she's already been in as well and getting organized and resident sharing resident sharing as kids in the SU and Great. Yep. very excited to kind of um, jump in and work with students before it gets to the point that she's kind of seeing them now in her career maybe some preventative things and help as well I'll, I'll say one of the things I ask uh, nurses a lot is about 
how they're going to support students socially, emotionally, and access the resources we have for students. Um, because the nurse office is typically a place where students who are internalizers will go to get support. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a really nice conversation about that. It's actually one of the areas that I'm hoping to do some more PD in with all of our SU nurses on some of our early release days is um, just to better equip them so that we can start to flag those things um, and make certain that that information is getting back to our social emotional teams yep. so that we can be trying to be proactive with those supports um, and not reactive because really those students sometimes that are internalizers it you know the reaction is the nurse meets the need in the moment mm -hmm. but meanwhile they're me they're missing instruction that's critical right and so we want to keep them in the classroom as much as possible so it was a really good conversation. I will say that she, she, I remember being impressed with her engagement in that, um, you know, outside of just, you know, the band-aids and uh, right. helping us navigate COVID and those things is that she, she seemed to embrace that concept. And this is sort of a general question, but is there much relationship between the school nurse and the guidance person? Uh, there has not been in the past, I will say. And the piece Sam, our school counselor, Ms. Sam, was on the hiring committee, and she yes. was really excited about the possibility of working I together, and that was part of the social, emotional piece that um, Chelsea answered, spoke to as well, and they've yeah. already started working great. together. Great. That's, that's really great so to hear, because I think that's see. really important mm -hmm. too, that they're talking to each other. Good. Um, I'll entertain, unless there's further questions, I'll entertain a motion to accept this slate of new hires as... Describe. Make a motion to accept this slate of new hires as described. Second motion. Seconded by Bill. Uh, Justine. Yay, your name? Aye. Aye. Patrick. Yay. Aye. Yay. Patrick. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yes. <laughs> I like yay. Bill. Yes. Amy. Yes. Ethan. Yay. Good. Granville Hancock board does yay. Mm -hmm. Yay? Almost. Yeah. Like great. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I don't hear that. You just make me think I was at Granville Hancock. That's great. That's great. Uh, uh, great. We're in public comment. Um, Robert Mayer being the one person sitting in front of us. Um, being well, you not have, official. of course, a list of... Um, oh, no, I know we have people online, though. I don't have that list, of course, so you might have to it's help just me. just Karen and Tim. I Is it just Karen and Tim? Okay, yeah, great. Um, Robert, do you have any more um, public comment? Thank okay. you. Uh, Karen Rubin, do you have any public comment for us? She's weeping. Complete, fully complete in February. Okay, so the select board wants to take it to town meeting in March. Correct. To determine what is going to be done at that time. Correct. Um, and as far as the arrangement of what goes with the building should the town decide to purchase it, is that still up in the air? Is that to be determined? Is that all supposed to be worked out? We need to discuss What's this. the time frame that it's going to take for that to get worked out to actually say if the town says yes, we'll do this, that hands will act, you know, it will actually change hands because I don't see that happening in this by the end of March, to be honest with you, because I imagine there's a lot of legalities that go along with that. So if that's how you guys are discussing having that happen, we may not be winterizing that building this and we, at this point, won't know the cost difference between winterizing and leaving it open and operational 
until September, at which time you'll vote them to be the winter or not. Did I understand all that correctly? Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. I, I believe that's correct, yes. Um, the, you know, to the basic, and I, I like your adding the detail that once they've formally said yes after this vote at town meeting, that there is a legal process that needs to go through in terms of the transfer of deeds and all that, and that that will take some amount of time. We don't know um, uh, how long that'll take. Um, so that is and probably at least, I would say, at least another month. Of That's what we were being advised before. Yes, yeah, that it's going to be at least days. another month. So yes, at this point, and we are going to vote up or down on this at our next meeting, that there would be extending, keeping the building, building at minimum heat. Um, uh, probably the date would be sometime in April. Yes, exactly. That point is, is important. And you're not going to make that decision without having those two figures on the table? Correct. Correct. Will the decision of winter I think come down to just that, the two figures on the table, or the potential that the, the town is going to take ownership of that property after the town vote? I think that's up to the discussion at the time. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I can't speak for every member of the board as to what what, what will be their deciding factor. I personally will say that I, I, you know, this is, to have that building active is a much better choice for our kids in our school here than having it being an empty space. Um, but it's not necessarily going to get used during the winter as we no, no. That, all those standards, I believe, will still apply. All the standards we've applied as far as it's used by the school or anything like that, it will be minimally heated as it was last year, um, which we have figures for in terms of what that cost. Um, that would be our standard um, and definitely not, not using it for educational purposes. Okay. Is that clear? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. I just wanted to yep. kind of make sure that I understood all of that because like I said, it's, it's hard to hear the people in the seats across from you. Yep. No, I, I hear you, and I appreciate you reiterating, because I think it's very important to be transparent about our discussion and about the new timelines we're talking about, because obviously this is a change from how we've been thinking for the last year when we set September as a possibility. And um, I think the more it's, we're, we're clear about it, the easier it is for people to understand and to give us their feedback. So I appreciate well, it. Great. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Much appreciated. Tim Pratt, do you have a comment for the board? He's muted. No, nope. you're muted, Tim, if you are talking. Or maybe you're not there. You may be watching the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is. Okay. Uh, I think we've given you a reasonable time, Tim. Um, we'll, uh, we will move on then. One, one question oh, yes. that you need to, to consider is, is if, the, if the building is heated, are you going to allow the town of Rochester to hold their annual mm -hmm. meeting in the auditorium? Great. Well, well our, standard is, <laughs> our standard is no educational. Um, yeah. And we did let Suzuki in there to use the south end of the building. So I think that would be an, a case-by-case -case basis is what we've been sort of established. Is that we will... Same thing to keep in mind, because it was virtual last year, or different, wasn't right. it? Right. Yeah. But think, there's also theatrical events that oh, yeah. are open, yeah. probably with some sharing, I, cost sharing for heat. And that sort of I stuff. think it's a case-by-case -case basis, and I think people have to um, approach us with enough lead time so that we have time to discuss it and, and prepare a budget for them of what we would need. Um, so don't leave it to the last minute, which is my problem all the time. Um, but uh, I would instruct the players to, to, if they want to use it, then come to us months in advance so that we're well prepared for that possibility and then we can discuss it. Does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. All right. I believe we're at an executive session. Do we? You don't need them.
We don't need them. Great. Um, so so we, will, we, need to we are uh, still. We, so we can't appoint a treasurer yet. That's what I was going to tell you. Oh. So we don't have the official resignation of your okay. current treasurer. So okay. they'll remain in place. And then the plan is, Terry, do you want to give an update? I think we yes, have. Yes. So when your current treasurer reached out to me to let me know that she wishes to resign from the position, she already has found a replacement for yeah. her. So we can accept the resignation and appoint the temporary treasurer through the next election at the same time. Perfect. Great. So I just need that official. And I totally spaced my mind today to remind her that she needed to get it out to us. So okay. I will follow up with her September. at the, yep, at the I'll call her tomorrow and follow up with her. So when you can, can all like, dress. <laughs> right. It'll be the same example as the board. You can appoint until the next annual meeting. Gotcha. Yep. And then at the annual RSUB meeting, we'll need to elect. Yep. We'll put it on the ballot. Okay. Um, All right. I think this is a good time to mention that uh, Jamie has advertised for our recording secretary, but we do not have one still. Um, he is going to send the transcript of this to another board's scribe and, I don't know, direct them, ask them, plead with them to do it for Who's that? I don't know. You said you were going to do something with the, the Well, video. so for today, uh, yeah, I've got a couple recording secretaries that cover other districts that I think will do us a favor and watch the recording okay. and uh, put the notes together okay. within the five days and oh, get them. We um, need somebody. And then we'll, who, uh, to Bill. And then uh, we'll get them posted. Okay. And you can, you know, approve them next week. Patrick was the Patrick. clerk of the board. Oh, it is Patrick. It's Patrick. Yeah, it's not Bill. The minutes have to go to Patrick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick. Patrick. I thought it was Bill. Nope. For review and acceptance and submission. Patrick, how did they ever wield you into that gig? He was great. He volunteered. He volunteered. <laughs> you know, I don't remember. That. <laughs> so, uh, Patrick, I will put you in contact with the person once I get them to agree. I've got a couple okay. of folks out okay. in mind. Okay. Um, oh, Karen, just to answer your um, uh, question, yes, Suzuki did use, we made a decision that they be allowed to use the south end of the building. This was after we toured. All the board members had toured the entire high school building. Um, it seemed the less, the least amount of work. Um, they very much appreciated the use of, I think it was only the theater. Did they use the music room? Did they, I don't know if they, they did. I did, okay. Um, so it worked, it worked very well. It and it definitely brought revenue. Um, they, they really do take over uh, Rochester Town. So um, uh, I, I know that the town was very appreciative of the board's decision to allow that. Good. Um, our next meeting will be September 7th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. regular. It will be at Stockbridge and for the next Meets. meeting and also on Google Meets. And uh, just so you guys know, I've got for uh, future agenda items, um, the board retreat agenda. Yep. I've got uh, Lyle will be here for a big part of the meeting for the generator. Good. Um, and also the building, uh, the cost uh, to, to give you those uh, comparisons and um, we'll be certainly talking to you about all the excitement around opening school mm -hmm. good uh, which is exciting well thank you Ed. this has been wonderful tonight to hear all that you guys are doing yeah. it really is yeah. incredible I'm very encouraged That's right. yeah no I'm psyched and, and I'm psyched. It like I'm I gotta say today it was uh, it was I've not had to talk COVID in about Whoa. seven weeks. You know, so in terms of Well, look at us. I mean, you know, um, it's, yeah. It's